uh, both houses of Congress, state legislatures everywhere. I think something now 61 percent of the American population has chosen total Republican leadership in the states. Uh, this is an extraordinary sweep, and this is very much about the Obama legacy, the Obama policies. And as, as President Obama himself has said, when my policies, uh, my policies are always on the ballot, even when I'm not. And when he's not on the ballot, he's a vote. He's a great vote getter himself. But when his palace policies are on the ballot, they get slaughtered. And so he's not on the ballot anymore. So I'd be careful. And Donald Trump has uh, he has got to be just sort of waving it away. I mean, I don't know that he welcomes it. But I think that after he's used the, the national media and the Democratic Party and this president, as well as his opponent for a foil throughout the campaign, he wouldn't mind it a bit. You should use him as Putin did. Putin sort of brushed the president aside in their, last, was. their last farewell today. Uh, I, I think the bottom line is the president better put on a seatbelt because in six months he won't recognize any part of his legacy because it'll be gone. Yeah. Obamacare is going to be gone. The, the war, the 15 years wars that we've had in the in the Middle East will all be in a different uh, different environment. Uh, this is going to be uh, interesting to see right. his choice for defense secretary, because he is he has said, and I think he meant it that he knows more about uh, what is happening with those wars in Afghanistan uh, than many of the general officers. And, by the way, a 15-year-long war uh, against radical Islamists sort of demonstrates his case. Well, it does, but I think that I think the fact that he's looked at Jack Keane and looking at uh, General Mathis to be the Secretary of Defense in both cases, superb men, great leaders, uh, whether they're in the military or not in the military, they're leaders. And I think uh, uh, that anybody who gets a, a star in the Marine Corps is, is walks on water. Anybody who gets four stars uh, basically really walks on water. This is a fabulous person. I hope he gets to, gets to be the Secretary of Defense. Uh, he, has, he has referred to as the greatest Marine in a generation. Right, right. Uh, and I've seen nothing or anyone who can dispute that. Of course, the left will produce them. Right. Uh, but, uh, but I just, I think he is of such a caliber. Uh, I can't imagine who Donald Trump would put before him, especially after Trump's glowing remarks over the weekend about the general, about being the real deal, so right. impressive. Uh, what do you think? Well, look, he certainly seems to be uh, closing in on the job. I I'm struck, too, Lou, by the, you know, the, the record of President Obama with the military is not a record that any president should ever want to copy. Uh, I mean, it essentially was a purge of those who did not agree with, with his view but, of the wars. And so looking I, forward, yes. you're, we're looking at a, a, a president-elect who, from what I have seen, uh, wh whether it be Bedminster or the Trump Tower, uh, the people moving through there are of such a quality that any president would be delighted with that caliber of person. But, that, but that's, why, that's why they're not in current service, because Obama essentially didn't well, want that them, type of leader. Two of them specifically yes. actually cause and effect that, yeah. uh, rejected by this president. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Patton. I think I've seen the movie 16 times, <laughs> uh, and, and I, 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 I read, Stirring stuff. Read, read, yeah. read the books. Uh, if you read the quotes from this general, He's, he's the modern-day Patton, uh, and, and to be called Mad Dog uh, by the Marines is a pretty is a high compliment. Uh, <laughs> so my sense is he'll go ahead and shake that place up, and, and I think it needs to be shaken up. Uh, if we're going to rebuild it, uh, you're going to need someone he who also basically says, understands. And, and I agree with your construction and your comparison, but he also said, uh, where there is innocent, uh, do not take the shot. Uh, he also said that don't squander a victory uh, with an immoral act. Uh, and I think that that is that's a leavening that George uh, Patton did not uh, always, uh, you know, produce a great general, immense and, and stirring fellow uh, and highly, highly uh, successful. Uh, and it's, but it's nice to hear that uh, right. that leavening quality in his character. But all the characters that they're looking at today and, and the ones he's already appointed are very, very strong leaders. So I'm very pleased with that. Well, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, Secretary of State, is it still Giuliani's to lose? I think, I mean, my concern at this point in time, and I, I may be a lonely voice here, I think Romney would be a big mistake for this simple reason. Uh, he never endorsed the president-elect. Uh, he basically may not have even voted for him. He has no expertise in foreign affairs. And I think at this point in time, you ought to reward the people that were there in the trenches with you because there's See, many now, qualified people. In a very people. fancy way, you're sounding every bit as primitive and petty 
and shallow as I am in saying that any man who offended me that to that degree, I couldn't possibly tolerate. I, well, I don't think it's a question of tolerance. I just I think he, he's well, had in it, my case it is. He's, 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 he's had his shots, and I, and again, I don't think he has the credentials that, that he's such a yeah. uh, master. Well, uh, I, you get the last word. Well, look, I, I think we'll find that, out if it's a, if it's a unanimous. Okay, uh, I think in terms of Giuliani, if he's going to be the candidate, I mean, what stands him in good favor in addition to to uh, supporting Trump and helping Trump is the fact that he would be a forceful advocate for Trump's position. All right, uh, what about Ambassador John Bolton, who's coming well, up here? Later? Also, also the same thing. Romney would be would not be. I mean, Romney n not just didn't support Trump, but his whole demeanor, everything about him, says a much softer way of approaching it. A, a forceful message has to be delivered to our are, allies and our adversaries. You guys are really starting. I mean, you've, you've gone this. from the Pauls. You've I mean, you've been, <laughs> animal spirits have been high in here, and now you've got these sentences that go for a paragraph. You've got all these big Latin derivatives. I mean, you're getting really, you're turning to governance. I admire that. <laughs>
who don't really need health care so that he can preserve what is the, one of the worst architectures for any uh, kind of plan ever, that is Obamacare. I, I mean, this is a, a president who seems to be admitting that the deal isn't quite going the way he wanted, isn't what the American people wants, nor certainly the, uh, the incoming president wants. And he knows that Obamacare is a disaster. He can't even hide from that. There's literally nothing left of his so-called legacy. There's nothing. Well, these are the two, it's a smoking these are the, heap. Yeah, these are the two signature initiatives, Obamacare in the first term, the Iran deal in the second. Uh, and I don't think either one of them will survive. You know, uh, th and that's why the administration on the Iran deal has been scrambling around, leading uh, Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, as you know, to call John <laughs> Kerry a shill for the Ayatollahs acting yeah. as though he's the chairman of the president of the Tehran Chamber of Commerce. So I, th I think... Uh, I like the uh, idea Trump of Ryan and Kerry becoming sort of uh, polar opposites there uh, on, the, uh, on, on the battle. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, the sad part is neither one has done what they should have to preserve the integrity of the nation's interest in, in permitting the deal. Uh, the same can be said of uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, it, the, the GOP performed terribly. Uh, in all of that, uh, you know, obviously well, and that's it's the why, president's deal, but uh, why in the world they were not in court to stop it, why they did not go to the highest court in the land to assert the Constitution is beyond me. Well, it's not well, entirely it, it's, beyond it, me. I know it's because other presidents have created such an imperial office that they couldn't. Well, you've just said everything I was going to say, but oh, but that's why I think the president. I take it all back. Can I do that? No, that's okay. That's fine. It's a, it's a, it is a historic uh, retreat by the Senate for 75 years, and yeah. they're they're where they, their predecessors put them. But that's why I think it's important uh, for Donald Trump, once inaugurated, to move very quickly in the early days of his. A presidency to abrogate this deal. We've got to send a clear political signal that it's a strategic mistake. We've got to warn companies, give them fair warning that any deal they do through a European subsidiary is very much at risk. Uh, this this is an urgent, urgent matter. When the Ayatollahs get nuclear weapons, they're the biggest uh, financer of terrorism around the world. What if they give a terrorist group a nuclear weapon? This is extremely yeah. dangerous you know, for us, for Israel and others. And you know, it is one of those things that seems to me uh, to go without saying. Why would they not take, I mean, no matter what his interests are, how perverse his interests are as president of the United States, how could he not see exactly what you have said? Uh, Be it's because his worldview is completely backwards. He thinks that well, if we only could convince the Ayatollahs that America is not a threat to them, they'll say, oh, my goodness, right. we don't need nuclear weapons and sweetness and light will break out. It's a basic misconception. Absolutely. Which suggests to me that you're saying that uh, we all owe a debt of gratitude to Donald Trump for preventing a third term of the same sort of thing. A absolutely. Ambassador John Bolton, thanks for being here and we wish you all the best. Thank you, Lou. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. Do you believe Obama has any idea how much failure for which he's responsible and how little Americans want to hear from him after he leaves office? We'd like to hear from you. Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. And on Wall Street today, a record-breaking day for stocks. I get to say it again. The Trump rally goes on. The Dow Jones Industrials jumping 89 points, the S&P up 16, the Nasdaq up 47 points, all closing at new all-time highs, volume on the big board, 3.6 billion shares, the first time since 1999, by the way, that all four major indexes have hit records on the same day. Wow. A few thoughts now on the left-wing national news media and celebrities all arrayed against Donald Trump still snapping at his heels. Monumental left-wing ignorance on full display as well at the American Music Awards last night as they stupidly mocked the Trumps. I love my husband, President Barack Obama. I love Bruno Mars. I don't know what color he is, so I can't deport him. Those nasty comments turned off the audience, by the way, if you were wondering. The ignorance of the production generated a quick economic consequence for the AMA producers and ABC Network. A nosedive in audience numbers, the ratings for the award show, in fact, 
hit an all-time low. The low-life AMA production followed the cast of the Broadway musical Hamilton, lecturing Vice President-elect Mike Pence, for which Donald Trump has demanded an apology. But if Broadway only calls out Republicans, then I believe Broadway will soon go to, well, go the way of the left-wing national news media. There are far too many exciting entertainment choices these days that are cheaper, more convenient than a Broadway play that insults much of its audience. The New York Times is learning the market lesson. The public editor saying the number of complaints the paper received over its election coverage has spiked to five times the normal level. means the Times is just deliriously in denial. Also living large in delusion... Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. ...a conservative that after listeners of the taxpayer-funded public network complained about an interview with Breitbart senior editor at large, Joel Pollack, who has the unbuzzer, Elizabeth Jensen put it, got the better of NPR host Steve Inski. I've never been a fan of NPR or left-wing anything, but I've never been a fan of economic boycotts either. It doesn't matter. The rising call for boycotts on social media is gaining momentum. The left-wing national media, Broadway and Hollywood, have overreached clearly. While their leftist politics will likely not shrink, their audiences certainly will. Audiences, consumers, customers are, after November 8th, no longer feeling constrained to tolerate lies and duplicity and propaganda on the part of media of any kind. And American voters, at least half of them, will no longer tolerate attempts at mind control through political correctness. The marketplace of ideas, thanks principally to Donald Trump and to tens of millions of working men and women who voted in this presidential election, well, those folks are aroused. And that's wonderful for all of us. Our quotation of the evening, this one from Phil Graham, who said this of working people, government is not the generator of economic growth. Working people are. Guess what? Working people went to the polls and they saved the nation with a little help from Donald Trump. We're coming right back. Well, uh, joining me now, the host of the Chris Plant uh, Show on WMAL, Chris Plant, and Republican campaign strategist, Fox News contributor, Tony Sayeg, and thank you both for being here. Let Hello. me start with all that is going on now with this, this administration. I can't think of it as a transition, Chris. It, this, this is already an administration, and they're giving the left fits in transition, aren't they? And it's just wonderful. It's just great. Um, they, they dragged, um, uh, Trump dragged representatives of all five networks up to Trump Tower today, brought them into a boardroom, read them the riot act, called them liars, called them frauds, gave them hell. Uh, it's just great fun. He's going just, after the minute, people. Wait a minute. <laughs> just because they lied? And well, just because. And, and that's their job. Come on. That's their mission. <laughs> that's, that's what they do. That's their thing. That's uh, fake news. They're going to be banned by Facebook uh, soon. Maybe. But he's, he's given the people at Hamilton hell. Look, the culture war is on, and, uh, and Trump is winning all by himself. Mm -hmm. They don't even know it, but Trump is already working on a second term. This is going wonderfully. I, I couldn't ask for any more than we're getting right now. It's just it, great. It does feel like an administration, you've got to admit, Tony. And, but let me, let, let me go to one other part of this, and that is suddenly the culture war that Chris is referring to. Mm -hmm. It's as if the people who are honest and truthful and not in media, it's an immediate <laughs> advantage. But that people who do lie and do lie in business, whether in politics or media, are going to be under some pressure. That's a good thing. No, no doubt. And look, the voters marginalize the elitist. powerful rebuke they've suffered in their last 20 years. So I think they're yeah. still reeling from it. And guess what they're doing now, Lou? They're marginalizing their self. They're acting like sore losers. I mean, when you look at the New York Times, the cast of Hamilton, I mean, just culturally across this country, this kind of behavior that really treats 
average Americans who just want jobs, feel safe in this country, as if they're somehow not really part of mainstream culture, yeah, goes to show you how right. low they have gotten. There's all this pent up, obviously, all this pent up anger and hostility and condescension on the part of the media. They have yeah. got, they've just got to spew their bile on their front pages and their home pages. I mean, if you look at the Washington Post, the New York Times, again, I mean, we're 50 day, 59 days away from the right. inauguration, and they're still acting like they're in a, a, a death match uh, for the presidency. They don't understand. Well, they've lost it, and it's a new time. Mm -hmm. They're Adonis. not going to stop. This is just the beginning of this. I mean, honestly, Lou, I, I was making the argument uh, uh, the other day that this to the news media that losing the election for Hillary is the equivalent of 9-11 to the intelligence community. The news media had an epic fail, a catastrophic fail. They had it in the bag for Hillary Clinton. It was a done deal. She had won. They told us all she was going to win. They told us 82 percent, 91 percent probability she's going to win. And they were wrong. They lied. Now, honestly, it's like the CIA after September 11th, and they're scrambling around. I think if the news media could invade Iraq, they would. <laughs> they're, they're completely out of sorts. They don't know what to do because they failed. So they're flailing about. They despise Trump. They're going to try to destroy yeah. every name that comes up for a possible position in the administration. Every person will be assailed as though there were criminals. They're going to call them so, the usual names, racist and xenophobe and uh, Islamophobe. Way, who cares and, anymore? Well, they, they lie well, about that's that's everything. Just Why would you believe them about anything? That's they've, exactly right. And they've completely devalued the terms racist and xenophobe and all these other they terms have. that do apply in some cases and are really terrible when they do apply. But they right. don't apply in every single well, case where you disagree thing, with somebody. And that's the, that's the ultimate problem. The other thing is you see Donald Trump in complete control today, the meeting Chris yeah. referenced with the network executives. But this whole transition process, Lou, has been completely pristine in the way it's been run, transparent. People from all sides of the coalition that should be representing opinions in this country bring brought in by Donald Trump, acting as a leader, a unifier, someone who's going to build, yeah. obviously, a government that's going to work for people for once. And I think that's very refreshing. You know, I, yeah, it's wonderful. I have only one thought here. I, I, I wish that uh, perhaps the next time... Uh, the president-elect or president, uh, whenever it is, holds a meeting like that with those folks from the uh, networks. I, could he? You think it'd be unseemly for him to have a camera and microphone? <laughs> and the I'd like well, to see. It should be on for view. <laughs> you know, they, they had, uh, last week they were declaring Trump's administration to be the least transparent in history because he uh. went to 21 with his family, right? <laughs> the news media demanded that we allow cameras at the elevator banks at Trump Tower and then you know outside of the golf course. And, and, and after they allowed these cameras, the New York Times lead story today, the headline is, Trump turns stayed process into spectacle as <laughs> aspirants parade to his door. The press demanded that the cameras be allowed there so they could see who's coming and and going, and then they declare it to be a spectacle yeah. as aspirants parade to his door. Yeah. These people and have Chris, no credibility you, whatsoever. You, and you Why know not? this. Just because they're hypocritical, contradictory, and obviously utterly <laughs> confounded. And, and both of you know this. When the press has nothing really good to say about you, but they don't have evidence to really create a, a, a scandal or a story, they create something called a process story. They criticize you right. on the most mundane aspects oh, of you're what you're into, doing. Into right. my crap. Oh, now, now we're coming. You're, you're a, a glaring exception, Lou. You're, well, bless you heart. avoid those. I don't get to be called well. glaring very often. Chris Plant, Tony Sayag. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. Up next, President-elect Trump campaigning as the law and order candidate. Law and order must be restored. The war on our police must end, and it must end now. Four police officers have come under attack over the past 24 hours in three different states in San Antonio, Texas. Detective Benjamin Marconi fatally shot during a traffic stop Sunday morning. Police say the suspect, Otis McCain, is now in custody and he targeted Marconi. They absolutely felt targeted. I think the, the uniform was the target and anyone who happened, the first person who happened along was the, was the person that he targeted. Police officers also targeted over the weekend in St. Louis and Gladstone, Missouri, as well as Sanibel, Florida. All three officers shot are recovering. Joining me tonight, former Washington, D.C. homicide detective, Fox News contributor Rod Wheeler. Rod, great to have you with us. This, is, to this brings to nine the number of police officers shot uh, this month. 
Uh, we're right. looking at raging violence uh, on the streets of this country and in, in our major cities. And it seems to be directly, directly led by a president who decided that law enforcement was the problem, not the hoodlums, not the crooks, not the bad guys and gang members. Well, you know, Lou, there's a lot of truth behind that. I mean, when you look at the statistics and you look at the facts and circumstances surrounding each and every one of the 56 murders of police that Donald Trump is going to be in the White House. Why? Because he ran on the premise that he is a law and order candidate. Oh, you know what? He was killed for one reason and one reason alone, because he wore a uniform and he cared about his community. But guess what? Marconi won't be at the Thanksgiving Day table come to that's right. And, and I, I don't quite understand when this country decided, it was within the last eight years, that somehow there wasn't going to be outrage, uh, that there was not going to be some sort of backlash against this kind of violence. This is a president, when he wasn't attacking law enforcement agencies and officers, he was trying to explain away the violence in, in socioeconomic terms rather than in terms of right and wrong, law and order. And Donald Trump has made it absolutely clear this is not going to stand. What must, what must Donald Trump, in your judgment, think about what do, does law enforcement want so that at least they're respected, they can't always be safe. It's a dangerous right. job no matter what. But That's right. they should have our respect, our support, and, and certainly this kind of uh, violence uh, has to be... Uh, it has to be stopped outright. Well, it has to be stopped, absolutely. And you know what? Our, our communities need to become outraged by what's going on. Look, let's face it. President Obama has been what I call the nickel and dime supporter of police officers. He hasn't really supported us like he, had, like he should have, and as well as President Obama, Loretta Lynch, as the top law enforcement officer. Let me show you something real quickly. We've had four police officers, Lou, that's been gunned down in this country in the past 24 hours. Have you heard a word from the Department of Justice? Have you heard a word from President Obama? But I'll tell you, when you did hear from President Obama two weeks before the election, you, you found him everywhere campaigning for Hillary yeah. Clinton. But now that we police officers are being targeted, we don't hear a word. So it's time for a change. And I honestly believe that with the new president, we're going to see that change. Look, America is tired of this crime. We're tired of crime in our communities. We're tired of crime against our police officers. And it's yeah. time to do something about it, Lou. Absolutely. And, uh, and enough of the group and identity politics and how about taking That's care right. of people and making sure our communities are safe uh, all around the country for everyone. Rod That's Wheeler, right. always good to talk with you. Thanks for being with good us. Good to talk to you too, Lou. Take care. You too. Up next, the Trump administration plans to push an aggressive agenda from the very beginning. Vice President-elect Pence revealing the top priority for the administration. He wants to focus uh, out of the gate on repealing Obamacare. Uh, and beginning the process of, of replacing Obamacare with the kind of free market solutions that he campaigned on. Former presidential candidate Forbes Media Chairman Steve Forbes joins me here next. Stay with us. We're coming right back. In our online poll, we asked you last Friday, are you, your family and friends, considerably more optimistic following the election of Donald Trump? 96% of you said yes, one of the Heaviest uh, vote in all history, I should say. In the blue dots tonight, scientific polls. Join me now, former presidential candidate, former media chairman, editor in chief, Steve Forbes. Great to have you here. Good to be with you. What a start. He, he seems, to me at least, I'll admit uh, considerable prejudice, but he seems to me to be a bigger figure almost with every passing day. He is bringing a, he's insisting on respect in this transition as if this were the beginning of an administration.